Hi, Dr. Goldberg here, continuing our infectious disease series. Today we're talking about septic shock. Uh, just give you some bullet points on septic shock, uh, recent updates, that type of thing. Mortality rate's about 30%, no matter what. So be straightforward with your patients and their families. Um, patients that do worse, have, of course, have meningitis, have a GI source, uh, pulmonary, better than a, a GU source or skin source, unless the skin source is related to fasciitis or <coughs> toxic shock syndrome. Attack the source of the problem very quickly. Remove infected material. Uh, necrotic material uh, or antibiotics aren't going to have a big impact. So those are uh, key, uh, key things to uh, remember. Uh, in terms of the uh, antibiotics, you want to get them going quick. Within three hours, that decreases morbidity and mortality rate. And of course, we normally go with broad spectrum antibiotics, initially covering anaerobes, gram negative aerobes. Uh, the you know, staph would be MRSA, MISA, or strep. Uh, and just, you know, broad spectrum initially, if, if you don't know. So, um, in terms of fluid resuscitation, we give uh, 30 to 40 milliliters per kilogram of crystalloids. Um, saline appears to be. Uh, fine regarding, uh, you know, relative to using albumin, uh, mixing it with uh, lactated ringer solution uh, is fine. Um, we've used 6% uh, head of starch in lactated ringers, though recent studies have not shown a big improvement with that. Keeping the CVP between 8 and 12 if they're off the ventilator and between 12 and 15 on the ventilator is key. We monitor the lactic acid level. Uh, generally, it's over four. We are, we uh, monitor the procalcitonin level, and we pressure support them with norepinephrine. This is much better than using dopamine. Uh, we usually use two to twelve micrograms per minute. Phenylephrine or neosinephrine uh, may be added, uh, forty to sixty micrograms per minute, and then we can sometimes add vasopressin, <coughs> 0 0.01 to 0 0.04 micrograms uh, per minute if patients are norepinephrine resistant because uh, these patients are often anti-diuretic hormone deficient. In terms of uh, the use of hydrocortisone, uh, we're recommending 200 milligrams a day uh, IV uh, for you know several days, maybe through day seven, especially if they're uh, not responding to uh, treatment or if their blood pressure is staying low. Uh, oxygenation, 90% of the patients are going to be on mechanical ventilation using small breaths of 4 to 6 milliliters per kilogram is recommended to keep the uh, SCVO2 uh, more than 70%. That's the central venous oxygen uh, saturation. Um, so key, key, those are some keys. Now activated protein C, uh, we used to uh, uh, infuse this over four days, but recent studies have shown uh, conflicting results, so uh, we do not use activated protein C anymore, uh, even though sepsis does activate the clotting cascade causing protein C deficiency. Supportive care is a no-brainer. Uh, prevent DVT, GI bleeding, skin breakdown. Uh, we do intense glucose monitoring, kind of try to keep the blood sugars on, under 180, and then of course we transfuse if the hemoglobin is less than 7 uh, grams per cent. Uh, Nutrition-wise, uh, we found that underfeeding is probably uh, better uh, in the first several days, not using TPN. So, uh, again, just giving you some um, general guidelines on treating uh, this awful disease. Uh, we're still uh, inundated with septic shock patients on a regular basis. And uh, most uh, hospital centers these days, of course, are going to have septic shock, shock protocols, which are modified on a regular basis. So thanks, Dr. Goldberg, signing off.